from bureaus worldwide. This is FSN. Thanks very much, Ollie Barrett. Thank you very much. Well, well, well. Brussels is open to postponing Brexit, eh? Brussels, hang on. Brussels is open to postponing Brexit. So we've been told. Well. Hit you between the eyes. Go on, Silla. That's the surprise you see. Surprise, surprise. Yeah, Brussels <laughs> is open to postponing Brexit. I never saw that one coming. How you doing, by the way? Are you well this Thursday? Welcome back to the most listened to independent radio show in Europe. It's your Richie Allen Show. Surprise, surprise. It's the Richie Allen Show. Broadcasting live on richieallen.co.uk and multiple platforms around the world. And now, here's your host, Richie Allen. I'll be welcoming back Deborah Tavares and Jim Fetzer to the Richie Allen Show today. Back in March of 2011, nearly eight years ago, a massive tsunami generated by a major earthquake caused chaos at three Fukushima Daiichi reactors caused a major meltdown. Four reactors were written off and contaminated water leaked from the units mixing with groundwater. That continues today. Why the media blackout on Fukushima? Why no follow-up? Why do we get an occasional article in the broadsheet media but we get nothing from the broadcast media about Fukushima? Why? Deborah Tavares will tell us all in around about 15 minutes time and you might know by now I'm sure you do last month Lenny Posner whose six year old son Noah was among 26 people killed at Sandy Hook Elementary School in Connecticut in 2012 Lenny Posner has sued none other has filed suit against none other than our friend Jim Fetzer claiming that the harassment against him has got to end him and the other families. He sued Jim. Jim will be on the programme to talk about that in the second hour. And it'll be a robust conversation, that. No doubt about it. A lot of time for Jim, but I've got to put the other side of this to Jim in the absence of the families of those who died. I I will put a caveat on this. I don't think that Jim Fetzer and Wolfgang Halbig are insincere and that they do not believe what it is they say. I believe they believe it. I also believe there are a million questions unanswered about that particular shooting back in 2012. But I don't think that is incompatible with loss of life. I don't think Lenny Posner and I don't think Neil Haslin are actors. I don't think that at all. And I'll be putting that to Jim in the second hour. And I'll put your comments out there as well. Feel free to be as robust as you want to be yourself. I'll be happy to hear from you. So it's a packed old programme today. As usual, you can tweet me. It's at Richie Allen Show. Tweet me and I'll be glad, as I said, to hear from me. I know I say that every day, but I do mean it. Massive Brexit story this afternoon. Very big story, in fact. Over to Kay. Good afternoon. Two senior former defence officials say they've taken the unprecedented step of writing directly to the Conservative constituency bosses to warn them not to support the PM's Brexit deal. The former head of MI6, along with the former chief of defence staff, says Theresa May's plan threatens Britain's national security. In a letter seen by Sky News, Sir Richard Dearlove wrote, We are taking the unprecedented step of writing to all Conservative Party chairmen to advise and warn that uh, this withdrawal agreement, if not defeated, will threaten the national security of the country in fundamental ways. Please ensure that your MP does not vote for this bad agreement. Yes. Former MI6 head Sir Richard Dearlove and an uh, ex-chief of the defence staff, man called Lord Guthrie, have written to Conservative Association chairs claiming that the EU withdrawal agreement threatens national security. It will be voted on next Tuesday by MPs. It is expected to be defeated. These guys are coming out. It is unprecedented. They are saying it must be voted down because it threatens national security. 
Sky News reporter John Craig explains what has gone on and it is about defence and an ever militarised union across the EU. John Craig. Why are they arguing it's a threat to national security? Uh, A couple of things really. First of all, Um, Buried in the agreement, they say, is the offer of a new, deep and uh, special relationship with the EU uh, in defence, security and intelligence, uh, which uh, they say cuts across the three fundamentals of the national security policy. Number one, membership of NATO. Number two, uh, intelligence relationship with the USA. And third, the Five Eyes Intelligence Alliance. Now, that's UK, US and Canada, New Zealand and Australia, the leading Commonwealth uh, countries, countries. They're arguing that the deal uh, surrenders control of intelligence, they say, uh, to the EU. Um, pl- uh, they say that, um, uh, please uh, ensure your MP votes against this bad agreement. Um, it says that uh, it, uh, it uh, hands... Uh, uh, it, it says it, it says the withdrawal agreement abrogates the fundamental contract with the UK, would place control of aspects of our national security in foreign hands. In other words, with the, U, uh, the EU, uh, that's because they say that, um, uh, they also say that uh, they've touched a raw nerve in Downing Street. It is, as they say, unprecedented for a, a former chief spook, former defence chief, to write to Tory association chairman or any political party for that, telling them to ensure, as they put it, their MP votes in a particular way. They will no doubt be accused by critics of meddling. Hmm. They are being accused of meddling by critics, by Remainers, but also by Brexiteers as well. It's been a bad day for those who, first of all, believe that Brexit will be delivered. It won't be, of course, you and I know that. But it's been a pretty bad day for them. It's been a bad day for jobs in the country as well. Jaguar Land Rover said it's cutting 4,500 jobs with with most of those job cuts coming from its UK workforce. It said that several challenges, the slump in demand for diesel cars and a sales slowdown in China means it's got to cut four and a half thousand jobs. It said also, thirdly, uncertainty caused by Brexit has uh, led to the job cuts. You won't be surprised that the UK commercial and national broadcasters jumped on the third cause, this uncertainty caused by Brexit, and have been talking about that all day long. And we're going to stay with Brexit just momentarily. I know it bores the trousers off of some of you, but it's very serious. Staying with Brexit and the annihilation of the referendum result of 2016, the Labour leader Jeremy Corbyn has um, called for a general election again at the earliest opportunity to break the deadlock over Brexit. In a speech today, he said a new government would have a fresh mandate to negotiate a bet better withdrawal deal with the European Union. Here's Corbyn. This is a government that cannot command a majority in the House of Commons. We will move a motion of no confidence in the government at a time of our choosing when we judge the best chance would be success in doing that. Because we do not have confidence in this government and we honestly believe that the best way forward is a general election. I hear what you say about the time since the referendum, but I think everyone in this country would say this is a government that... uh, didn't win a majority in the general election anyway, cannot command a majority in the House of Commons, brings very little legislation forward because it can't get it through, and is uh, losing unprecedented numbers of votes. This political chaos cannot go on. The only way forward, the only way out of it, would be a general election that people can decide which um, MPs they wanted, which party they wanted to be in government, and what the priorities of that government would be. Theoretically, it should be very difficult for him to get a general election because of something called a fixed-term Parliaments Act, which was passed during David Cameron's time as Prime Minister. It was an act which, which basically cast in stone or set in stone the notion that a Parliament would be for five years come hell or high water. We'll have to wait and see anyway. Corbyn, uh, in a Q&A with the press after his speech, also hinted that Article 50 could be extended, further delaying Brexit to buy time for more negotiation. Brexit is dead. It was dead the day after it was voted for 
by um, 52% of the population, remember, or 52% of those who voted, I should say. Here's Corbyn on extending Article 50. No, there, there is no split uh, on this. Keir and I are here together today. He's talking about Keir Starmer, his colleague on the front bench, the shadow front bench. Uh, Keir Starmer is the Brexit, uh, shadow Brexit secretary. Here he is anyway. Well, here's Corbyn. He made it clear the practicalities of negotiating, which is also the question that came from Sky on this, that uh, an extension would be a possibility and, uh, because clearly there has to be time to negotiate. The point you make from Sky about 58-42 leave, yes. Uh, that was the vote and that was the result in this area and um, indeed in many other areas it was even bigger than that. Also in other parts of the country it was huge majorities to remain. Yeah, Article 50, delaying it, extending it, putting back the time, you know, that time, that date I should say, pushing back that date at with, with, with God, what's happened to my teeth? Who put my teeth up on that shelf? Yes. Moving the date, that date where the UK would leave the European Union, moving it further away into the distance, Corbyn is all up for that, this um, this flip-flopper extraordinaire. We'll leave Brexit alone for now. What time are we? It's 14 minutes past the hour. It is Thursday, the 10th of January 2019. This is your Richie Allen Show, live on Fab Radio to TriggerWarning.tv, RichieAllen.co.uk and tune in Radio. So Donald Trump is going to pull UK, US troops, even US troops out of Syria. No, he's not. The Secretary of State for the United States, Mike Pompeo, has been speaking today in Egypt. He said the US will work with allies to expel every last Iranian boot from Syria. We can't leave, says Mike Pompeo, so long as the Iranians are there. Hezbollah and all of that. Pompeo warned that Syria would get no reconstruction aid from the United States so long as Iran and its proxies are still in Syria. Pompeo criticised ex-President Barack Obama's Middle East policy, saying that Obama had made dire misjudgments. Pompeo was in Egypt, he was in Cairo in fact, speaking only three weeks after President Donald Trump said that US troops were pulling out of Syria. They're not. They're not. They're just not. These decisions are not made by people like Donald Trump or Mike Pompeo. They are made by other people. You and I know this. Ever tr- ever since Trump said that, he's been roundly laughed at by Republicans like Lindsey Graham and others who, on a daily basis, say, we're not going anywhere. We're certainly not leaving uh, Syria. Right, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut short this monologue to get Deborah Tavares on the phone because I want more time with her, right? We're going to talk about Fukushima, the meltdown following the tsunami, which came about because of a major earthquake in March 2011. Groundwater being contaminated by radioactive materials inside the ruined reactors. No mention of it on broadcast media anyway or anywhere doesn't get spoken about. I can say that with no fear of contradiction. Yes, the Telegraph newspaper, The Guardian, will have an article once every few months. Those articles claim that everything is okay, nothing to worry about. Well, I don't believe it because hundreds of tonnes of contaminated water continue to seep out of that wreck that used to be that nuclear plant. What's it doing to the Pacific? What's it doing to the west coast of the United States of America? I've had people on the programme periodically talking about this, but we've not touched on it in quite a while. So it's time to get Deborah on the show. Your Richie Allen show then. Let's have some killers. This is Mr. Brightside. Music from the killers on the Richie Allen show. It's exactly 19 minutes past the hour. Can't wait to speak with Deborah. Just before we say hello to her, let me give you some context here. Now, it was in March 2011, a massive earthquake set in motion a huge tsunami. It was 15 metres tall, which um, caused devastation and killed um, several thousand people. But it also disabled the power supply and the cooling of three reactors at the Fukushima Daiichi plant. 
the reactors melted down. All three cores largely melted in the first 72 hours. They were written off due to the damage. And from day one, contaminated water leaked from the three units mixing with groundwater from day one. How much radioactive material? Well, we don't know officially. We don't know for a fact. 150, what we do know is today in uh, 2019, 150 tonnes of groundwater at least still percolate into the reactors through cracks in their foundations and then that water becomes contaminated with radioactive isotopes in the process. And I can tell you this, back in July 2016, only two and a half years ago, TEPCO admitted that the ice wall had failed to stop groundwater from flowing in and mixing with highly radioactive water inside the reactor buildings. TEPCO said they are technically incapable of blocking off groundwater with the frozen wall. What does that mean? And as I said, apart from a newspaper article every few months, the broadcast media, the BBC Sky ITV Channel 4 in this country, will not touch it. They do not speak about, nor do they offer any updates as to the situation at Fukushima. And it is acknowledged and admitted that human beings on site cannot locate the hundreds of tons of fuel inside the nuclear reactors that suffered those meltdowns. They are hoping in the future that maybe robots can. Imagine hundreds of tons of water, groundwater, leaking into the Pacific on a daily basis. What's the truth? What's really going on? There is no better woman to ask than the whistleblower, the writer, the broadcaster, Deborah Tavares. I could be here all day telling you about Deborah. Check her out at stopthecrime.net. That's stopthecrime.net. Deborah, welcome back to the program. Good morning. Thanks for coming on. Yes, thank you so much. I'm going to be referring to a document that I'm hoping everybody will download as soon as possible and read it. It is entitled Electromagnetic Defense Task Force 2018 Report. Now, I'm going to go over Fukushima as written in this report on page 10. This is critical for everyone to hear. Um, what we know, again, is what happened uh, in Japan on May 11th of 2011. There was a man-made, created 50-foot tsunami that was caused by a man-made 9.0 earthquake and it inundated the Fukushima nuclear power station, which we all heard. We were hearing what was happening those days in uh, just a a cascading amount of disconnected information. And what I'm going to read to you out of this report right now connects that information, Richie, and it really helped me to understand what happened, how they did it, and now what the plan is to create a massive Fukushima out of the United States. And I'm going to get into that. Go ahead, Deborah. Again, uh, it's important to understand that the earthquake was created, the 50-foot tsunami was created, and uh, in the power station, which was situated on the coastline, I'm going to pause here right now because everyone needs to listen to the YouTube we have up called Coastlines Under Attack, Storm Surge Artificially Created. Understand the enormity of what we face, okay? Coastlines Under Attack. This links into all of this. Um, The Fukushima nuclear power station, again, which was intentionally located on the coastline, and they say it's important to note that the Fukushima facility employed general electric reactors. Japan's regulatory structure was modeled after the United States, and the plant's staff were trained in accordance with U.S. standards and procedures. They say everything was the the state-of-the-art and in line with U.S. best practices. We're going to talk about the best practices that were disinformation and literally setting this disaster up. And here's what they claim was the final blow to the failure that day or over those days and months that followed. They said that to prevent the meltdown, water 
was normally circulated through electrically powered cooling systems. But nearly all of the reactor cooling systems were of similar design. This is worldwide, I'm noting. And they say that the Fukushima facility had no electricity after the tsunami. It should have been able to revert to the backup emergency core cooling system, which is usually electrically powered by emergency generators. The generators that would have powered the emergency cooling system were damaged by flooding. This damage meant the latent heat from the nuclear reaction could not be removed from some of the now offline reactors. While, this, while the situation was apparent to the operators early, the logistical issues hampered any efforts to restore electricity to the water pumps. No off-site help was available. So let's talk about that. They're blaming the flood, the tsunami, on, on literally what occurred in Japan. This took any and all liability off of General Electric, and it took any and all liability off of the procedures that the United States Incorporated stated are state-of-the-art. Now, why is this so important to understand? Because in this document that I just told you all to look up, Electromagnetic Defense Task Force 2018 report, out of the military, you're going to find out that the United States has not even hardened up our electrical power grid here. And what does that mean? They're talking about how they have not gotten around to doing the hardening up of the grid. Now, why? Because the utility companies have been lobbying this diabolical regime, this de facto government in the United States, to not harden the grid. And while many, many scientists and many people have gone to what they believe is a government in Washington, D.C., pleading with representatives to harden the grid up here in the United States to prevent a massive, a massive Fukushima, We're, the U.S. right now is in a position to, um, to literally melt down uh, when they create the um, the dark start, the black start, as they call it, when the grid, the electrical grid, is down. They're allowing now, it to deteriorate. They, they're allowing this situation to deteriorate. The lobbyists yes. have, have, have lobbied hard so that they're not compelled to harden the grid and protect the, the you know, to boost the defences of these plants. And they're getting away and, with that. And they are. And uh, this, there was a book written, um, gosh, years back called One Second After. And it is a novel, but it depicts what a, a failure of the grid could create. And I have to tell you, in this document, which I will cover further, uh, it's important to note how the United States is claiming that they're not prepared for a grid outage. And they're, logistically, uh, the military would be grounded, uh, we would have massive failures, and within hours, there would be mass rioting in the streets. Uh, there would be um, uh, many fires set, and I'm going to go into that in a little more detail because they say um, in this document, I'm looking at page 12, for example, they say um, nuclear reactors and spent uh, fuel pools must have water circulating re and to remove the heat. A failure to remove the heat from the water due to loss of circulation will cause water to boil off, in which case the radioactivity of the steam is compounded by the radioactivity of exposed rods, which must emit and would emit a harmful beta and gamma radiation. So they say, when suffering from a loss of grid supplied electricity power, Nuclear power stations use backup generators. Currently, it is not a requirement to harden up these generators. Loss of emergency power generators can lead to substantial military, human, economic damages if these last line units are unable to electrically power and support critical safety systems. Now, I want to I underscore the fact that the utilities are Rothschild. 
When we learned during and, and before the fires and the deployment and rollout of the smart meters, we found Rothschild was behind all of this and many of the associated banks and other large corporations. But it's important to know that in this report that I'm referring to, from the President's National Infrastructure Advisory Council, and it was published by the Department of Homeland Security, the U.S. government is urging the public to prepare for up to six months to uh, a year and, and even up to many years without electricity, transportation, fuel, money, and health care. And the Department of um, the DHS is warning that the electric grid is now a prime target for terrorists. Well, this is an inside job. This is an inside job. And why do I say that? They have not and intentionally not hardened up the grid. And yet they say in this document that Fukushima was set up and based on U.S. best practices. This was, again, a way in which to yeah. um, limit any liability. Uh, it sounds for, like, Deborah, sorry to interrupt, it sounds like they're not all singing from the same hymn sheet, because if Department of Homeland Security is screaming <laughs> bloody murder, if they're screaming from the rooftops, look, we need to tighten no, up the, the no, defences. No, no, Richie, the Department of Homeland Security is not screaming. But somebody is warning, uh, somebody, is, somebody is vocally or verbally warning that it's wide open to a foreign cyber attack or it's wide open to a natural disaster attack. So somebody is saying something. Well, there are things being said, but it's being said with the understanding that there's really, you know, the potential that we can't do much about this. Right. And this document is harrowing. Um, and I'm going to read a couple of things, too, that are important for people to understand, because we have our utility companies uh, literally, really going to be able to push the buttons to cause outages. And that's been occurring now. Uh, over the last few months, we've been noticing power outages. And in fact, we're being told, because we're in the fire zone, that they will turn off our electricity if we have what they consider to be an atmospheric condition that is then defined as a red flag fire warning. They will turn off the grid. And what that will do is will not allow water to be pumped in rural areas for fire defense, because unless people have off-grid ways in which to access well water when they're in their country uh, areas, they won't be able to have any kind of fire suppressant at all. But I want to I go over this because this is what uh, they're also setting us up for, and this is what we're being told here in the fire zones, that it is a vegetation removal problem. Well, that's just the um, disinfo around the facts that we've been hit intentionally with multiple types of directed energy weapons that have been burning up California. But getting back into what we know, and this is literally out of some documents, they say the Northern California Pacific Gas and Electric, again, they are PG&E, received very bad news back in the mid-2017. The public utility fined Pacific Gas and Electric uh, $8.3 million for failing to maintain a gray pine tree that connected with a power line and ignited a fire. The September 2015 fire burned 110 square miles, destroyed 549 homes, killed two people, and caused about $3 million in insured losses. Now, I don't remember that event. Uh, and then they say this. Tree contact with power lines is the leading cause of power outages and has caused several past regional blackouts, including the August 2003 blackout that affected 50 million people in the northeast uh, U.S. and parts of Canada. This and the PG&E incident show that inadequate vegetation management can cause worse devastation. So, Richie, we are being set up for a multiple uh, excuse of a power grid failure for lack of vegetation management, for one thing, wow. when in fact the smart meter grid was set up to be pulsed and did in fact contribute to the house-to-house -house in um, the town of Paradise in Butte County that burned here in November of 2018, and also the fires that in Sonoma County that burned us 
uh, in October of 2017. Uh, and, it's, and it's horrifying to see how this fits in with all the sustainable development goals of reducing the use and consumption of, of petroleum and how we're being transitioned all to electricity. All the rebuilds here in Northern California are being incentivized to not rebuild with, um, with, with, um, with gas, no gas. And Pacific Gas and Electric right now is in the position where they're looking to split off their electric operation and their gas operation. Now, let me tell you what is happening. The United States is being set up right now for a massive power outage. This correlates with the Deagle.com genocide plan of reducing the population here in the U.S. and in the U.K. and everywhere else. Um, by the year 2025 by percentages that I won't even um, venture to try to tell everybody, but it's diabolical, and people can go to StopTheCrime.net, go to our YouTube, and listen to 5G killing the culling of humanity. That's an interview that I did with Dr. Bill Deagle about the Deagle.com genocide plan. So when you look at this electromagnetic Defense Task Force report that just came out uh, 2018, you find that the U.S. is literally a sitting duck to a meltdown of, um, of um, nuclear facilities. And they say um, uh, complicated associ uh, complications associated with the strategic and creative imp uh, employments may be further co compounded when employed from gray zones. So they're starting to also suggest that there will be ghost armies on the ground that will comp complicate all of the events in times of catastrophe. Well, I can tell you, Richie, this is true, because just um, days within the tremendous fires that we had in 2017, it was observed by many people. There, there was anarchy in the burn zones. We're talking about looters by the droves with masks, and the homes that were still standing, uh, some of these people that stayed behind, and there were not too many that did not evacuate, but those that did not evacuate were chasing the looters out of the homes with shovels. Wow. And they even um, have a, an accounting of that entire event. But what is so important to understand is what we're being told in, in this document, and they're blaming it on potentially a, co a um, EMP, electromagnetic pulse. That will just be the guise for Rothschild to push the buttons and de-energize the power grid or pulse it and brown out areas. We've been losing appliances ever since the grid was deployed years ago uh, to pulse frequencies from the smart grid. And in fact, when you go to uh, smart meter smartmetersmurder.com, you will see uh, a list of thousands and thousands of consequences of homes that burned, appliances that were pulsed and not working. In fact, when your appliances don't work and you have a smart meter and you've got a wireless um, appliance, you have to first consider that it was uh, pulsed and you lost your appliance because of the smart meter. So when we look in conjunction with the intentional acidification of the ocean, the plan and the fact that they are using frequencies to create these blast wave accelerators around our coastlines. Then you look at what Fukushima caused. I, I'm reading constantly how in California along our coast, abalone season has sunk, and they're not going to be reopening abalone season until the year 2021. They say to give the stressed population time to rebuild. Well, they're not rebuilding the population because they're, they're, it's all disinfo. Uh, they're telling us that we just need things to recover. No, we're being systematically destroyed. What do we know and about the groundwater the leaking water. into the Pacific? We, I mentioned in my introduction to you, uh, Deborah. Yes, I heard that. By the way, Deborah Tavares is our guest, folks. StopTheCrime.net. Follow Deborah on YouTube as well. If you need those links, I will tweet them. Um, to where you can get them. But I know many of our listeners are, are more than aware of who Deborah is. So they're saying somewhere between 150 tonnes and 300 tonnes of contaminated groundwater
groundwater is leaking into the Pacific every day. I know that you might, and and I know others will suspect that that might be that might be underestimated. What sort of damage over seven, eight years? It's eight years. It will be eight years in March. What sort of damage to the ocean and to uh, to to fish life, obviously, in the in the ocean? What sort of damage could that or has that done? Do we have any idea? Well, uh, we have um, a lot of accounting on the different types of mass animal deaths. And there's been an annual list that has been prepared that indicates all the loss of uh, sea life and the coral reefs. We certainly know that the starfish have turned to goo. The abalones uh, are not able to be harvested now. We know that the Dungeness crab are toxic. We also know that the fish and game here in the United States changed the rules to allow recreational divers to take up to 20 gallons of purple sea urchins a day from the waters off of our coastlines here in California to see if that would aid in the recovery of the bull kelp and abalone because what they're and they're even using vacuums to suck up these creatures from the ocean floor and they say they have to reduce the sea urchin overpopulation because it's eating and consuming all the food that would otherwise have been available to the abalone so the the extent of the poisoning to our coral reefs is unimaginable and this is all part of a genocide plan uh, i i hate to say but it is a fact. Can I just when ask? I can, I, can I just jump in there just just momentarily, uh, Deborah? Uh, for for our listeners who don't know, abalone is um is a type of shell uh, fish, and um it should be widely available. It should be in healthy stocks in the Pacific on the west coast of the United States. But Deborah isn't the first person to tell me on this program that it isn't uh, widely available. You mentioned earlier on, and um, this is the second time we've spoken, it's, it really is great to have you on, it's very important stuff this. I, I've got to ask you, you you're, you're convinced and others are convinced that the disaster that befell the Fukushima Daiichi plant was man-made. And I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't ask you to elaborate on that. How do you think they are able to look it's not new information to me this but it will be for many of our listeners how can they bring about an event an earthquake like that that could trigger a tsunami and why would they want to do it why do that and how well that's a good question richie and um certainly many of the listeners i hope you realize the degree of total weather uh manipulation I would certainly hope that many of you have that as a baseline foundation for your understanding of the atrocities that are compiling um, on, on an increasing basis because we're all being uh, attacked now by weather weapons, and they're calling it climate change. Climate change is uh, hiding the use of weather weapons systems. And I would refer everybody to a number of documents on our website, StopTheCrime.net, uh, and certainly everyone could download the CIA 1960 Memorandum for Climate Control. We need to understand the enormity of what we face. And these disasters, Japan was literally set up to, to see the type of disaster and the, and the cascading opportunity that creating this type of um, of uh, disaster and how that would bode. And, and when we read and look at this document, the Electromagnetic Defense Task Force report that I keep referring to, and when you know that, uh, that um, tsunamis are now created uh, again, uh, we discovered that in our NASA war document when they were telling us back in World War II that um, the United States in Auckland was creating what they called a blast wave accelerator. Well, it is called Project SEAL, S-E-A-L. And we discuss that in uh, Coastlines Under Attack. So I would recommend everybody listen to that YouTube, share it far and wide, because they were going to utilize the blast wave accelerator on the low-lying coastlines of Japan had either of the two atomic bombs not detonated. And this was in World War II. 
And since then, of course, they have initiated greater technological feats with creating um, massive tsunamis and the capabilities now. So we look at the fact that we know that uh, tsunamis are now created or certainly exacerbated by the technologies. We also know that earthquakes are created. Uh, we also know that volcanic eruptions are also exacerbated as well. And we also know that General Electric is part of the um, continuum of the um, uh, corporate structure that is literally involved in genocide programming. And when, when we went to San Jose, just in the San Francisco area a couple of years ago, we listened to a, a General Electric CEO talk about the future of General Electric and the future of the world. And we were told back then that every single thing, I mean everything, anything that's a thing at all, would be tracked from its origination to end of life. And while at that time that sounded outrageous, but we certainly knew that those were the plans from many of the documents we were reading, we went to that General Electric speaker after his talk. And we said, while that is um, horrific information, uh, what do you do about the control of weather weapons and the dismantling of our weather systems, collapsing our food supply, uh, flooding us out, and burning us out. What about that? And what we were told really stunned me. He said, it is too far progressed. There is no stopping it. Wow. Now, now what do I say to that? Well, it, it allowed me to understand that this is all real. Um, I read documents such as Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars. I recommend everybody do that. It's only a 41-page document, a PDF download, Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars, to help start building a platform of understanding what we face. Of course, we have the report from Iron Mountain. And we've been told, we've been told, Richie, there's a quote by former um, FBI director, uh, Jay, uh, and I'm going to just read that so that people understand. And because we've been told this for so long, and at the time when I read this, I didn't understand what he meant. And here's what uh, J. Edgar Hoover said in 1956. The individual is handicapped by coming face to face with a conspiracy so monstrous he cannot believe it exists. Our minds simply have not come to the realization of the evil which has been introduced into our midst. It rejects even the su assumption that human creatures could espouse a philosophy which must ultimately destroy all that is good and decent. Well, when I read that, I didn't understand the enormity and exactly what that all meant. Yeah, I amazing. also yeah. didn't, Richie, I also didn't understand what JFK told us. We've been warned repeatedly. And you know what JFK said. I'll read that real quick if you'd like me to. Yeah, because, go ahead. Yeah, JFK said, for we are opposed around the world by a monolithic and ruthless conspiracy that relies on covert means for expanding its sphere of influence, on infiltration instead of invasion, on subversion instead of elections, on intimidation instead of free choice, on guerrillas by night instead of armies by day. It is a system that has conscripted vast human and material resources into the building of a tightly knit, highly efficient machine that combines military, diplomatic, intelligence, economic, scientific, and political operations. In other words, this ruthless conspiracy controls everything. Let me just and say something on that. Let me just say something on that. Those are two fantastically important quotes, and both of them are genuine. I don't need to tell you that, of course, but just for, for our listeners' point of view, of those two quotes, for me, the J. Edgar Hoover one is the more important one. I'll tell you why I believe that. Because you're on here, and I have you on, because I've um, been listening to you and reading 
um, you and looking at your work for quite a long time. And I think you shoot through your work at a lot of targets and I think you hit many of those targets. What what Hoover was saying essentially is, and I find this, and you, I think you, with your intelligence and your experience, you know this to be true as well. There are the vast, vast majority of people in the world and even possibly the vast majority of people listening to this program think that the idea that people are using directed energy weapons to create earthquakes and to create tsunamis, that people are using directed energy weapons to start forest fires and bushfires to cause carnage, the idea that people would deliberately poison an ocean and kill thousands of people and wipe out uh, plant life and animal life, and the idea that there is an extinction agenda planned for people uh, like us. The vast majority of people think it is crazy. They do. I don't think it's crazy. I don't think it's fanciful. I think it's important that it's discussed. But the vast majority of people listening to this will think this is just too far down the rabbit well, hole well, for Richie, me. Well, Richie, I once was one of those people. Yeah. I remember yeah. being told that there was a plan to reduce the population of the world. And I, uh, when I heard that, I really thought that person should literally be put in a straitjacket and put yeah. in an insane asylum. Yeah. And I was one of those very doubtful people. And then I started looking at documents after a few years of not wanting to even consider that as being true. And I wished I hadn't wasted, wasted so much time with a closed mind. Because as I started to say, well, I'll just look at it. I'll just see. And uh, as I started to look, I came across the report from Iron Mountain. And the report from Iron Mountain is a report to determine the minimum and optimum levels of destruction of life, destruction of property, and the destruction of resources. And I could see these reports and these plans as it played out in our building business. I come from a third-generation multifamily uh, home building uh, company. Uh, we built in Southern California for a number of decades, and I was seeing uh, changes occurring that I had no explanation for during the time. And then I found uh, this report and others that talked about the deliberate intensification of air and water pollution. And I was seeing that. Mm. I was seeing the water being poisoned, um, certainly with the adding of fluoride. And I'm wondering why on earth are they adding fluoride? This was used in World War II to suppress the prisoners in the camps. And then, and more. And then the, long, the report divulged the long-range planning and the budgeting of the optimum numbers of lives to be destroyed on an annual basis in a silent weapons system of warfare. And Richie, as I started to look at these documents and listen to more crazy people talking like we're talking right now, and, and literally uh, thinking that they've got to be nuts, uh, and then still reading some of these documents and slowly coming to the realization that this is true. And it even, I was so skeptical that we flew to Washington, D.C., to the records department. And um, we had had an emergency meeting prior to that, um, and I was saying to family and friends, if this document if we get this particular document from the record department in Washington, D.C., all bets are off. Our lives are not what we thought. We've been programmed. We have been deceived. And I, I went to Washington, D.C. and got that record, got that report. And essentially what that report um, was at that time, as best I can recall it, it was um, Congress allowed the Department of Defense to use chemicals and biologicals on the American population without our knowledge or consent. Yeah. And then I followed that through with a ver various types of operations that were being conducted here in the United States, uh, one in the 1950s called um, Operation Sea Spray, S-E-A Spray, and that was conducted over San Francisco. And um, there were so many operations that I started to find that the military was engaged in, in and with, uh, such as um, the voice of God uh, during the Iraq War. Certainly, in, in during the Rwanda genocide, we saw the operation called Operation 
crimson mist. And that was the use of microwaves in um, 130C Hercules planes that were used to exacerbate the anger that had been increased because of operatives on the ground. We have, again, ghost armies, secret op operatives, just like we have in the programs of targeting millions of individuals with directed energy weapons all over of the world. People need to understand the seriousness of our time. Well, you've done a Absolutely. brilliant job. Let, let me just in, endorse those documents you've mentioned. You've done a fantastic job in highlighting this real evidence, genuine, hardcore evidence. But I've got a question for you now, Deborah. And by the way, folks, it's Deborah Tavares, StopTheCrime.net, live in the early a.m. It's uh, coming up for 10 uh, a.m. there in, uh, in California. You know, all the documents you've referred to, the ones that were given to you, the ones that you uncovered yourself through your own investigation, are genuine. Yeah. They're sinister and they're horrible. Here's a question for you now. Do you think even if presented with those documents, and I'm talking about the, the, the let's call them the confused or the perplexed, the vast majority of people in the world, do you think if they are forced to sit down with Deborah Tavares and listen, and if they're shown those documents, do you think it'll make any difference to them, Deborah, or do you think they'll just bury their head well, in the sand? Yeah, I I can't I can't um, predict that. What I can say is that, in, by and large, more and more people are recognizing something is wrong, and not able to put their finger on it, and. Um, when I uh, talk to people that I don't know and I'm standing in line uh, at a grocery store or wherever I might be in a line, I never um, uh, miss the opportunity to turn around and talk to somebody. And particularly up here, I can start the conversation with the fires. And I will say, didn't that seem strange that on the night of October 8th of 2017, there were 140 fires in various counter counties all within a matter of hours. And we lost 8,000 structures yeah. in those multiple counties over those few days. And they'll say, yeah, it did really seem strange. And then I can say, well, it is strange. Something is amiss. And people will say, well, Pacific Gas and Electric did it. They didn't uh, cut the foliage from the, from the wires. That's the, um, that's the cover for the fires. Because Pacific Gas and Electric in the 1950s and earlier, were engaged in weather modification programs here in California with a creating precipitation, causing it to rain. We have documents, Richie, that show that Pacific Gas and Electric, along with many other, about eight other companies, were in fact successful in creating rain. And the reason that they were seeking to create rain was to increase their revenues on um, more water in the uh, um, for hydroelectricity. And they could have caused it to rain here during the fires. They chose not to. So that in and of itself, when you look at those documents, and then you learn that during the embargo in Cuba uh, with the United States, and uh, we also embargoed Cuba's weather through, and I believe it's Operation um, Blue Nile or Nile Blue yeah, operation, yeah, right, yeah, and that was yeah. during the same time of Operation Popeye in Vietnam when we caused it to rain out the supply lines in Vietnam. That's Operation Popeye. So they could have uh, stopped these fires. They didn't. They intensified these fires with the use of popping off the smart meters and the use of other weapons. Certainly we know that drones were involved because, Richie, when we went to a town hall meeting during all of these fires, there was um, uh, administrators from the various agencies that were involved in updating all of us with the status of the fires. And at that time, uh, Redding, California, which they call the car fire, was exploding. And um, it was just burning houses down, as had happened here in Santa Rosa, but not to the extent. Um, and the sheriff said when, when the fire teams got up there with overhead aerial suppressant desires, they weren't able initially to do any overhead fire suppressants because of all of the drones that were in the sky overhead. And 
I, I, we taped this. And um, I said in front of this group, why didn't you get rid of those drones? In other words, get them out of the way. Shoot them down, whatever you had to do, because they were impeding the ability to fight the fires. And we were told they couldn't have done that because they would have needed to have found out what agency they were with. Wow, so there, there was the inability to, to in, do any overhead fire suppressant in those early hours over the car fire in Reading. Now, we have gone also to um, the town of Paradise that burned uh, in uh, November of 2018. And we went through that town. It's 85% gone. And what we see now here in Santa Rosa, a, a little over a year after the burnout here, are policies that are coming in that are diabolical. And I would recommend to all the listeners, Richie, that everybody type in the name of your country or the name of your town on your search engine. For example, I could type in Santa Rosa, California, and I would uh, type in Climate Action Plan. Yeah, because, yeah. Richie, people will ask me, Deborah, where can we move to be safe? This is so horrendous. Well, um, I tell people, read your climate action plans that have been adopted by your cities that are incorporated and part of a franchise. I'm going to stop. Well, I'll finish the climate action plan. Then I want to talk about the franchising and the corporations because this is critical for people to understand. I did not understand that at all. So in, when you type in the name of your city, um, followed by climate action plan, you'll get a plan. Generally, they're, well, you know, they're over 100 pages. And what you'll find in your plan are the ways in which they're telling you in your area that you're going to suffer with weather consequences if you do not reduce your CO2 emissions. Now, we need CO2. Plants need CO2 so that they can create oxygen for us. And that's why I referred everybody in the beginning of our discussion to the CIA 1960 Memorandum for Climate Control because the intention, the intention behind this is to suffocate us with decreasing the oxygen supply. And um, I discussed that in Coastlines Under Attack. But what I wanted to talk about was the fact that we're not run by a government system that we've been programmed into believing we have. And I was one that was voting and believing that we could get the right representative in to turn around things over the years that were, were certainly hampering the ability for people to um, continue advancing in their uh, lives. But that never changed. I was one that went to hundreds of uh, city council meetings and county meetings and traveled to San Francisco in carpools with people to the California Public Utility Commission and to different organizations getting our one, two, or three-minute opportunity to speak and never understood why a hundred people would show up with documents, turn over these documents to the people in these various um, structures or elected positions that we thought they were, and why none of this mattered. The programs rolled anyway. And I want to make a very important notation right now, because people need to understand how we have all been delphied through the Tavistock um, uh, framework of manipulating all of us. And it has been extremely successful. And in fact, the World Bank promotes this type of Delphi technique in meetings to give us the opportunity to think that we weigh in as citizens with our concerns, and we don't, because the programs and the policies have already been adopted. And I, I want to refer to this very program that's underscored in this Electromagnetic Defense Task Force. Whenever you hear the word advisory group or task force, you must understand this is all a Delphi program. So what do I mean more specifically about that? Um, because I talk about this in a YouTube that we're going to be posting um, probably today on StopTheCrime.net. Um, and I would urge everybody to go there and listen to it. I cover this in detail. 
I haven't named the YouTube yet, but it's going to be something about uh, the power grid down and also what we've discovered with a global uh, network of uh, accounting firms that have proprietary forms that are um, coming into our cities because our cities have outsourced all the accounting responsibility to these international firms. And we have discovered that these firms are controlled by the international banks and that the uh, proprietary forms that are being uh, uh, utilized for all of our city's revenue and expenses for the coming years is void of any uh, consequence of climate change, or I should say weather assaults. Now, you and I would know that if we have a home on the edge of the sea that is subjected to many heavy storms and weather events, that we would build in uh, a reserve to replace our roof more often than if that house was, say, inland and didn't have that type of weather experience, right? Well, in our cities worldwide, these accounting firms are going to bankrupt every city and furthering our debt by our cities requesting and getting aid from the World Bank and other uh, lending institutions, calling them grants. And literally, this is an operation financial collapse with the, hit, the famous hitman team uh, to um, then uh, literally um, collateralize all these grants against our city infrastructure. And we also discovered, Richie, much to our shock, that the new sustainable development goals uh, through the um, through the different um, UN programs, United Nations programs, they have new financing mechanisms coming on board, which is what I'm talking about right now. And they're going to be coming up with financing mechanisms for climate change. And they're going to be assessing values on all resource capital, resource capital. And they cite as resource capital placing a value on grass. In other words, where the cattle... Uh, graze or any animals that um, eat grass, there will be a value on grass. They also say there will be a value on air. On air. Now, we use on air. This is, there's a massive, that's a massive red flag right there now. They're talking about air as a commodity. Oxygen, yes, they are. The air we breathe. Yes, they are. And I will add this because I know we're talking about um, Fukushima and the radiation, but this was all planned. The United States is likely if our grid, or when, I, when, when our grid goes down, because it will, we're not prepared intentionally. And this is what will happen because certainly our overlords believe there are too many people. And in line with the Wildlands Project, isn't this a brilliant way to get people off the land besides cutting off their water? Now, uh, I have a website called primarywater.org. For those of you, you need to understand our water is being um, reduced dramatically. Millions of, millions of people will die from the lack of water as well as increased uh, Fukushima's all over the world, as well as the minimalization and the continued targeting of weather weapons. And we're not only experiencing fires here, we're experiencing floods and we're experiencing landslides. And you know that when it's Santa everything. Barbara was burned and experienced landslides, people died from both events. From both events. And we're being told here in the United States uh, that because of uh, global warming and climate change and temperatures going up, that everything across our country will become more combustible. They're saying that because of the increased combustibility, a.k.a. Uh, continued geoengineering, which is holding the Earth's heat, the heat of the Earth closer to us and, and uh, increasing temperatures, as well as microwaves. We have such an expansive amount of electromagnetic smog and frequency that in areas where there are many towers, cell towers, uh, mast uh, antennas, now the 5G is rolling in, even now they have deployed the uh, wireless smart water meters. And there are actually um, areas in the United States where people are losing their homes because they're not able to pay their water bills now. 
because they can literally sell the home if they have an unpaid water bill because water rates are going up tremendously. Hang on they a second. Hang, hang, just give us one second because this is massive information. You've got, and I think, although we don't know each other that well, I think you'll understand that I'm not um, patronising patronising you when I say you've got an enormous brain, Deborah. Just just hold that thought for a minute. Uh, Deborah Tavares is our guest. I was due to have another guest on the programme today, but I've put um, him off until next week because this is too important and I don't want to cut um, Deborah short. So uh, Deborah can stay with me as long as she wants for the next 35 minutes or thereabouts till the programme comes to an end. So I've put my other guest, um, it was due to be Jim Fetzer, talking about his lawsuit with um, Lenny Posner. We're going to put that off till next week because this is too important and we're getting into some very serious areas here with Deborah Tavares, who is my guest and um, can be found, of course, at the website stopthecrime.net. And if you put Deborah's name into the YouTube search uh, bar, you'll find her YouTube channel very quickly. I've also... Uh, tweeted out links to Deborah, and I've also tweeted a link, and it's been retweeted many times to the report that Deborah referenced, the Electromagnetic Defence Task Force uh, report. This is DefenseAerospace.com. It's very important uh, stuff. This um, people losing their homes because they can't pay their water bill. So presumably, you're telling me that the water company then instructs a debt collection agency to recover the unpaid water bill. When the person cannot pay their water bill, their house is put up as collateral. That This is extraordinary to me. How does this happen? Well, uh, this is how collections are going to be done and handled as they continue to create the illusion that we're running out of water when in fact water is a renewable. Everyone needs to understand this. This is probably the best information you're going to hear me talk about is right now. Uh, Water is a renewable. I didn't know that before I knew that. And I will tell you, uh, it is created by the process of hydrogen and oxygen merging down below the mantle of the earth and creates vapor. And it is forced to surface. And of course, there are um, aquifers too where it um, uh, rises up into as well. Think of a a bee comb, a a honeycomb. Uh, Those can be the aquifers. And um, but the water forces up in uh, hot and cold springs in geysers that spray up out of the ground. People see geysers, but they don't ask and think about where is that water continually coming from? Yeah, I know I didn't. I looked at the geysers and thought, oh, interesting, and that was about the end of it. Um, When I went to Hawaii, I never questioned those magnificent waterfalls that were coming right out of the top of mountains, cascading into these beautiful uh, ponds down below. I never thought about where is that water coming from at the top of the mountain. They're not in a valley, and there's no snow there. Um, And then I found out about Momar Haddafi and the Great Man-Made River Project, which was at that time considered the eighth wonder of the world. And then I found out the United States and NATO blew that up, including the well drilling equipment. I then found out that drinking primary water creates a higher IQ. Now, here's, here's where our education falls apart. We have all been taught that our water comes from rain and snowmelt. No, rain and snowmelt is actually the evaporation process of primary water that has created new, clean, unadulterated water that is not falling through chemtrailed poisonous skies, flowing over poisoned fertilized uh, lands, and then ending up in these cauldrons they call reservoirs that they add other chemicals to, including fluoride, before they deliver that to your municipal water supply systems. Fluoride is a corrosive material. It is also causing many leaks in many um, plumbing fixtures in homes. In fact, when I checked into it, Richie, I found out that here in California, in areas where it's uh, fluoridated, the the, uh, insurance claims are higher because of failed plumbing fixtures, because of the corrosion of the fluoride. 
the in industrial the fluoride. System. The industrial the industrial fluoride, by the way, it's the byproduct of industrial activity, isn't it? It's um, th- that's the worst of it. It's waste. It's a waste product as well. Yes. It's, it's horrendous. Well, it's not made it in is. a lab. It is, yeah. and I want to talk about waste right now because there are a few things that have most recently come to my attention. Uh, and I know we're talking about Fukushima, but I want to certainly uh, talk about these things too. I want to talk about waste and what we discovered. Um, here in Sonoma County in Northern California in Santa Rosa, uh, we, we actually went on a tour of a wastewater treatment plant. Now, let me define the vocabulary word of waste. It is fecal material, poop, and it is urine, and it is um, contaminated uh, pharmaceuticals, and it is being um, retreated and in many areas served up as municipal water in our drinking water supply because they say we're running out of water. We have to reuse our fecal, urine, and heavily poisoned pharmaceutical um, waste. It's the same here. I also, I also discovered this, Richie, uh. that they're creating a blend now, and let me describe that. Uh, what the World Bank says and what the water agencies say is that um, they're going to inject this wastewater treatment garbage into the uphill streams and lakes or in rivers so that it can flow into our reservoirs and create a blend, a fecal urine pharmaceutical blend in an already poisoned toxic second, second atmospheric water supply. So I would recommend right now that everybody listen to the YouTube, Primary Water Explained. And you'll hear um, my talking to a primary water expert that has drilled for primary water all over the world and gotten to primary water. So for any of you that are of the means and the capability to consider drilling for primary water, I would recommend that you do because our water supply is going to be cut off. And what water supply being cut off looks like if you're in the rural land or in the country area, and that is... Uh, uh, an area that's in the target of uh, removing people from those uh, lands. Because when you're outside of your city growth boundary where we're seeing all of the money laundering buildings being built, that money's coming from lots of devious um, theft to build all these buildings that sit and are unoccupied. But um, when we look at the assaults upon people that live in rural land, Um, we can just see all the ways in which they're going to force relocation. And when you run out of water, here in our documents, the EPA documents tell us that the health department will come in and deem your property unsafe to live on, and they will forcibly relocate you to an area where you can get to potable water. Now, when we say potable water, we're talking about the blend. We're talking about uh, now the big thing is talking about desalinization. Forget it. Forget desalinization. We have primary water. We don't need to continue to bankrupt ourselves by um, uh, desalinization plants. I hear a lot of people talk about that as a solution. And I have to tell you, when you realize that water is a renewable and it's created continuously, when you hear that as a solution in water treatment plants, you realize the death wish that people have by creating these types of water delivery systems of evil and poison. It is poison. And they're getting away with it because this, sadly, is how the money is being distributed. The money is being distributed to build additional wastewater treatment plants. The money is being distributed to create desalinization as a viable drinking water source when we don't have to and should not. God ask you this because... Just, just to go back to the to the air quality um, yeah. issue, which we talked about a few minutes ago. As you were speaking about that, it's Deborah Tavares, by the way, live on the line from California, and it says stopthecrime.net. As you were speaking to me about that, it occurred to me, what's to stop a major corporation in the near future, backed by a corrupt 
government, well, every government is corrupt. What's to stop a corporation with the government's backing saying that the air quality is now unsafe to breathe for people like you and me, ordinary folks like us, and that the air quality needs to be treated in some way or another. That costs money, so now we've got to levy an air quality tax on you, the civilian. What's to stop that happening in the very near future? I'm amazed it hasn't happened in China or in Indonesia or someplace like that. that well, it's a kill mechanism for now, the intensified yeah. pollution. But certainly as we look at the continued um, implementation of these um, climate action plans and the plans created by the United Nations, we can understand that there will be many ways they will sell the idea that we have to buy air. And um, that will be one of them in order to get better air. They're also going to be selling areas where you can live where you'll have better climate because, of course, they do control the weather. And there will be areas and capabilities of potentially potentially purchasing a place to live that is not a hit with as much of a weather weapons assault. I've heard that. Uh, of course, I've not seen that documented yet. But what I have seen documented, Richie, was what I'm going to tell you now. Uh, during uh, the holidays here, uh, December 26th of 2018, uh, we had been up to Nevada City, which is only 70 miles from the town of Paradise that was literally leveled uh, in November of 2018. When we returned from that visit, we found a CAL FIRE uh, burn list. And um, the CAL FIRE burn list uh, included about 1,700 uh, cities throughout California that they said were highly combustible and that there would be um, tremendous loss of property. And they go through that list with all the, the cities. We're talking about a couple million homes that are de continued and will be destroyed here in California due to fires. So I would urge everybody to listen to our current YouTubes. I talk about that list. I talk about some of the cities that many of you overseas would know that they plan to burn up. And um, I can only tell you that I've observed, and uh, certainly other people in Europe, uh, Oli Demigard and others, have talked about exposing false flags, and sometimes that prevents these things from happening. So please listen to our YouTubes on StopTheCrime.net, particularly everything that I have put up since December of 2018 because I talk about the burn -em up list. And we went to a city that's on the burn -em up list. It's called Nevada City. It is an original gold mining town here in Northern California, a beautiful, beautiful city with all older Victorian homes, but surrounded by uh, thousands and thousands of dead trees, uh, fully uh, deployed upon by not only the electrical smart meters, but also the water meters as well. You could feel, you could f literally feel the uh, electrification in the atmosphere and heavily, heavily chemtrailed during the time that we were there. We felt we were very agitated, which is part of the symptoms and the extended symptoms of being uh, bathed in high frequencies. We were noticing after the fires the um, enormity of confusion. Of course, we know people were traumatized, losing everything, but driving became very risky because people were not able to focus. And we know that with the use of the heavy directed energy weapons, the heavy chemtrailing that ensued all the fires for days before the fires, during the fires, and after the fires, the chemtrailing was exceedingly heavy. And um, I would recommend that everyone go to StopTheCrime.net and download the symptom list that we have because Without really without exception, everybody throughout the entire world, sadly, is suffering from one symptom or another that is caused by um, what is occurring overhead with the chemtrailing as well as the microwave radiation and the frequencies. And this is all jamming our immune systems. And then you top it off with Fukushima, et cetera, et cetera. But the list talks about many things that we experience now.
Doctors are not trained to recognize any causes of electromagnetic frequency uh, um, attack. And so you'll go and you'll get medications for depression or a sense of suicide. You'll get medications for agitation or dizziness or being disorientated. You'll get medita- medications if you're having seizures and vertigo or nausea or vomiting uh, that is occurring, or even if you're finding that you're sluggish or you're having headaches or migra- migraines, certainly also with vision disruption. Now, I want to add this. This is very important. Um, we certainly know that the LED light bulbs are very poisonous to us in our environment, and this is certainly a requirement for the new green codes. The Department of Energy here in the United States has literally stopped manufacturing the incandescent light bulbs of the past. We have no choice but to buy um, light bulbs that uh, cause eye diseases. So with jumping from that, I want to talk about this, Richie, too, because I just thought of it. Um, uh, We had a personal experience with someone that lost their home here in Northern California. And right after the fires, bought a home that was under construction. And uh, when that home was finally finished and they moved in, uh, in this past year, in 2018, uh, there was a red flag fire warning. What that means is that the atmosphere and wind conditions and heat conditions are uh, just right for there to be a fire. And so they decided and felt uncomfortable about with that about that condition. So they decided not to do uh, what they were going to do that day. They didn't leave their house. They stayed in their new house. Now keep in mind, they got burned out and they lost everything six months earlier. So they stayed home and all of a sudden they're smelling smoke, Richie, and they go to investigate and the un- the unoccupied model home right next door to them, the backyard was on fire and the mulch was on fire The back wooden fence was catching on fire, and the wooden posts that were holding the deck up were also now catching on fire. They called the fire department. They ran out with garden hoses. Neighbors started to see this and came to the aid with water hoses. They were able, with the help of the fire department, that had to take off siding off of the underneath of the house because the fire had already crept in under the deck into the crawl space and was starting to ignite underneath the house. Well, no one knew how that fire started. And it was a few weeks later after the builder cleaned up all of the uh, burned material and replaced everything and put uh, some material on the ground because it was a hillside lot and here after the burns, Uh, There's a huge new market now created. There are lots of huge new markets created from weather weapons, I can tell you right now. But a huge market we're seeing is erosion control materials. That is like jute or rope material that is laid down either in long rolls or in like a net, um, like picture a net made out of rope. And it was laying down on the backyard uh, when they noticed these round Uh, scorched burn holes on the jute and they realized after looking at it closely that it was coming from the required new green energy low e windows and we have on stopthecrime.net under our email blast outs detailed information about how these low e energy efficient windows cause fires and they they are literally causing fires when it's like, think, and I'll just try to explain it quickly, but again, go to stopthecrime.net to our email blast outs and read the low E window expose. You can also just type in your search bar, low E windows and fires, and you'll find a cascading report throughout the country uh, of the United States and worldwide how these windows cause fires. In fact, there was a high rise in the UK that was... um, Uh, uh, causing uh, extreme heat where they could literally cook eggs on the sidewalk because of these windows. And they they were able to um, mitigate that by putting a a cloth over this high-rise, over the windows. But I can tell you that uh, that type of magnification coming from these windows when the windows are hit by uh, the sunlight, 
the argon gas in between the dual pane windows, the double pane windows, they they arc in. The window actually uh, goes in and creates a magnifying glass effect. These windows have burned up neighbors' homes when that energy is directed towards a parked car or towards a home. Uh, burn down cars parked on the street, if that's the direction, and then the ignition. So I can only underscore right now, this is a requirement um, and being backed by the Department of Energy here in the United States under the new green energy codes. It's a way in which to create fires. There have been no recalls on this, Richie. No recalls. And because of all of the destruction throughout the country, of all of the loss of housing through hurricanes and tornadoes and flooding, uh, fires, etc. There's going to be a lot of new construction, and also with the intensification of instru- of construction in the um, transit areas in our cities, they're building high rises, uh, and they'll all have new windows. So I just wanted to report that right now for everyone that's listening. Please get this information out far and wide because you may be the cause of burning your your neighbor's home down or their car, or worse, uh, starting a fire that burns uh, out your community. Some of the images, by the way, I've got to say this, on stopthecrime.net and on the YouTube uh, channel, some of the evidence is just compelling. It's, you know, it's beyond, you can't ignore it. To ignore it is to kind of descend into a kind of a permanent state of cognitive dissonance. The evidence is... For me, it's 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 overwhelming. Deborah Tavares is our guest. I want to ask you, Deborah, before um, we 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 run out of time, we've got probably around about fifteen minutes left here uh, today. A number of people have asked me. You've covered an enormous amount of stuff today. What's going? What's behind this? Is there some? I'll give you. I'll give you just just one um, question there before um, it jumps off the page on me there. Uh, One person in particular, I won't name the person, has articulated it very well, this question. What does Deborah think about the fact that something seemingly beyond humanity appears to be running things or in charge? Um, Is it just um, bad people? John Lennon once said, you know, we're being ruled by a bunch of psychopaths. Is it just bad people or is there something beyond humanity happening here? Well... Um, again, I discuss documents. I want to be clear on that. Yeah. I certainly have my assessments from the enormity of what we face, that it is bigger than big. I know that much of it is uh, sadly through human compromise. I also know that uh, much of it has been uh, programmed into the kind of employment that we all have to work ourselves into this agenda of demise. I see that. I see how our jobs, uh, when you're deploying uh, smart meters uh, for the utility company or you're working for the utility company or now you're deploying the 5G network, which is all part of a a military assault mechanism, uh, we have people that are, 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 are earning paychecks from killing us. That I know. Do I think it's something bigger? Um, I'm inclined to believe that we're in a, a, a warfare of good against evil. And I, I believe that um, uh, we're seeing uh, this amped up uh, enormously because of um, the wireless communication uh, and more. And I'm, I, I, again, I have my own assessments there, and I could spend a lot of time in talking about how I think those documents connect with that question that was that you're asking yeah, me. Yeah, it's difficult, yeah. But, but I do believe. It's a multifaceted, multi-leveled assault. And again, as um, as the FBI director said, uh, so evil to destroy all that is good and decent. And so you know evil. what's interesting about that, um, Deborah? Speaking with Christopher Bollin on the program yesterday, and Christopher was talking about secret societies, and he was talking about the financial elites. What we do know for a fact is that when you look historically at the social behaviour of the the financial elites, 
they were very much, I say were, I don't know if they still are, I can't prove it. I might suspect things, but I can't, I can't claim to be true what I can't prove. But we know that socially, th- not just through secret societies, but also through their social um, activities, these people are very much into Satanism. And satanic Absolutely. ideologies and satanic Absolutely. imagery, right? Bloodletting, yeah. uh, child sacrifice, yeah. pedophilia. Uh, their power source is driven from by by the need for power and uh, the murder and and killing of children. In fact, that was one aspect of going to Cuba that I had not realized. I did not realize that uh, that the Vatican was uh, controlling uh, Cuba in in drug uh, drug warfare into the United States, as well as pedophilia and trial trafficking. I never knew anything about that. I also never knew about Operation Peter Pan. Operation Peter Pan came up in the transition of um, when Batista was um, taken out of power and Castro was just coming in. The uh, Cuban elite were told that the Castro government was going to take the uh, Cuban elite's children and send them off for re-education if you were 16 years or under in age. And the Vatican worked on uh, propaganda in the media and um, newsprint and radio to convince the Cuban elite that their children would be safe if they were uh, sent to the United States and that they could catch up with their children within a short period of time. Operation Peter Pan uh, was uh, the transporting of over 14,000 children, predominantly boys, illegally into the United States by falsifying documents through the Vatican, being flown into the United States on American Airlines. And uh, 50% of these children were never recovered, Richie. Yeah, that's right. And when we went to Cuba... We were um, talking to a number of people there that were in their 60s because Cuba now has recently opened up to travel. And so many people uh, from Florida that have little little Havana uh, were traveling to see their homeland because many people were flown out by their families at the, mid, at the dark of night, basically with one suitcase, to escape. And I didn't understand what was really happening in Cuba and why I'm talking about that this is because this is happening throughout the world just in different ways. And I'm going to explain a little bit more about Cuba because no one else is and we went there. And I'm going to tell you that when I searched uh, the Cuban prisons, I was able to print off uh, over a dozen pages of prisons. They have men and women prisons. And um, Cuba is a prison island with many little prisons within it. They already have had water rationing for decades. What do I mean by that? Well, the water is only turned on in some towns once a day for a couple of hours. In many towns, maybe only once a month. Uh, As we were driving through the cities, we saw um, cisterns on the roofs so that when the water was turned on, they could um, put as much water into those cisterns, those tanks on their roofs, so that they could access water. The water is very contaminated. As tourists, it's, um, you're not to drink the water at all. You're not even to dr- um, eat or buy things on the streets because of the water that's used to grow these things. Uh, there's also uh, the, the Cuban people only earn about $20 a month, and they're given um, these ration, food rationing cards. And the food rationing cards do not allow one person to get enough food for an entire month. So the Cubans are forced into other types of menial labor to try to make up a little extra money. Uh, they Um, have to live in multi-generational living conditions, which is fine, of course, uh, but in order to survive and in order to share the food and the water. Uh, It is a very, very um, secretive state. There are um, literally secret police hiding in bushes, and we filmed this, Richie. And when we were um, going around with some some people, because we did not want to see 
uh, Havana from the perspective that most um, tourists go there. They want to waltz in the prior ideas of Hemingway and ride in some of these cars, these old 1950 cars out of the U.S. that you see in Havana. And um, most people don't have cars. Uh, it is already a UN Agenda 21 planned environment in that most people walk or they have, uh, if they're lucky enough to have a horse, uh, they'll have a cart, and you see these carts piled with dozens and dozens of people. Um, they're constantly spraying for mosquitoes because in the bay area of the Bay of Pigs, there's this huge, huge wetlands, and uh, many uh, mosquitoes are there. In order to keep the vector down, they're spraying. You can drive around in the streets, and they have laborers spraying for mosquitoes everywhere. Um, also, uh, they don't use tractors in the harvesting of their food because they don't have enough oil. It costs too much for the gasoline um, or the fuel for the tractors. So they hand pick because human labor is so cheap. And they'll load onto tractors in some instances from the fields and then transport that to uh, farmers' markets. Now, the Cubans cannot afford to shop in the, in the farmers' markets because, sadly, the food costs have escalated to the point that they can't augment their food supplies because of tourism now increasing. We're literally raping Cuba of the ability to afford what little food they grow, and they don't grow enough food, and they have poisonous water. So as tourists go in there, the um, hotels now that are sprouting up, uh, mafia back in there again, never left, and uh, a lot of the new restaurants that are catering to the tourist palate uh, are buying some of the produce and so forth that is being organically grown only because they can't afford fertilizers, which is good. But uh, it's shooting the prices up, just like when uh, there are ex exodus from other countries of migration and people leave first that have money and they go into a, a, another country and they'll start buying up housing. That escalates the prices and literally starts to price people out of their areas because of values of, of, of housing going up so much. We're seeing that here in the exodus of uh, California into Oregon and other states because people are selling out and it's happening all over the country. And globally, there's just a massive uh, refugee and exiting and relocating happening now for many, many reasons. Unreported, in, unreported, of course. Well, you're, you're reporting it, but, but largely the press and television and radio just ignore it. Yes, absolutely. In fact, on StopTheCrime.net, uh, there's many things I would still like to cover, and I know we have very limited time. But I, I just want to say that uh, Santa Rosa here in Northern California hired a London-based accounting firm. And um, that is in some of my current YouTubes. I would uh, certainly underscore that everybody take a listen because this, these are global accounting firms that are spreading into all of our cities. We are a mass the, the, the world is Earth, Inc., and I first heard that from Al Gore a number of years back. And I knew we were USA, Inc., and to then uh, graduate into the idea that we're Earth, Inc., uh, made me realize we're all in this same sink and ship. And it's not just one country that is being targeted. It's all of us. All of us. So all of you that are hearing me, you're hearing me tell you uh, what I have uncovered, because quite frankly, the maternal instincts that I have and the desire to not be deceived and lied to and accept lies anymore, I, I, I can't go there anymore, Richie. I cannot. And I don't believe that, that um, ex it, for me, extinction is not an option. And yet that's what I see occurring with all of these plans. So I am hopeful that if enough people understand what's going on, I'm hopeful against reality, though, that we'll have ways in which we can survive a little longer because we know that we're deeply now involved into human augmentation and the transhumanism agenda and the replacement by us of robots. So when you look at all of that, you can see why there's an increased effort 
to uh, murder all of us through all of the types of weapons systems. And this causes great enjoyment for those in control, whoever you consider those in control to be. Well, you know, just to, and, just to endorse what you said about robots, there's... Ah, it isn't like me not to remember specifically, but there, one of the UK broadsheet newspapers today featured an interview with a Chinese academic who reckons that half of human jobs, half of human jobs will be gone within the next 15 years to uh, automation or to robots or to yes, artificial and what intelligence. And what we're seeing with loss of jobs yeah. is increased depression, yeah. uh, inability to feed families, and then uh, loss of housing. Again, you heard me talk about even the loss of housing because you're not paying your water bill. Water rates are going to skyrocket. The World Bank talks about how they will cleverly scheme water pricing, and they'll allow the less uh, advantaged uh, populations to have some type of programs for a while just to make it sound like it's helpful for um, people that need a little more help. But if they miss paying their bill one time, they're no longer eligible for the program and then uh, what the consequences will be and would have been their decision. So I, I, I talk about many things, Richie, because being a developer by trade and um, reading documents as uh, development requirements were for me, uh, reading city documents, uh, I was accustomed to the, that vocabulary. And what I find is a changing vocabulary across the board. I hear that uh, we're now stewards of the land. Yeah. We're not owners. Yeah. We're stewards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The vocabulary is changing. And we must hold on to everything that we have as being human. Now, of course, uh, the up-and-coming generation can't even write in cursive. They can't even read cursive writing. It's not being taught in the dumbed-down common core school system. And those are, of course, a lot of historical documents are in cursive. Our, our generations can't read that. Um, I, I look at the daily chemtrailing overhead as a constant reminder that I am truly in the world that I'm finding because I, I sometimes need a mental break from this thinking somehow or another I just fell into a bad sci-fi movie. But I can tell you the best description that I've come up with for how I feel is that we are in a deadly video game gone live. And that's what it is. Because when I'm here in Northern California watching firsthand directed energy weapons through the power grid and other military weapons, and then I discover in that YouTube, coastlines under attack, and I find out that every branch of the U.S. military and the global military, actually, has been set up for the defense of the elite, the controllers, and That's not for us. Not for us yeah. We're being targeted by our military. And, and money is being redirected from road repair, from maintenance of, of um, gas lines, from the infrastructure, from the bridges. When you add to all of the crumbling infrastructure and the lack of maintenance because of the uh, theft of money, you add then all of the increased uh, frequencies in the air, which uh, creates structural, in, um, it reduces the structural integrity of buildings. It's like being pulsed with continuous earthquakes. And then I found out uh, that here in Santa Rosa, we have the world's largest geothermal operation. And again, that's a YouTube up on StopTheCrime.net. I will tell you, the enormity of what we face is beyond uh, grappling. And it, I can say that what I've now also read in the documents, because of the global weather control, and now in California, we're being told all, rebuild, all rebuilding and all new housing must have solar by the year 2020. Well, that's going to add to increased costs, less availability for housing for many people. Of course. And while many of us may think solar is good, it is good, but they're, they're um, doing away with solar because of increased solar dimming of the geoengineering program. And because they know that solar is not reliable because they do control the weather, they're transitioning 
uh, energy supplies to now what they ca call and consider 100% renewables, and that's through geothermal plants. They're also weaponizing and creating WAVE, W-A-V-E, energy from the sea. A, the enormity of these plans and the geothermal operations, this is what caused the eruption on the big island of Hawaii. It was the Puna geothermal plant, P-U-N-A. Go to StopTheCrime.net. Listen to the YouTube, and we take you on a tour of the, again, the world's largest geothermal operation right here in Northern California that was started by PG&E, a.k.a. Rothschild. Now, that is on the Ring of Fire. There's volcanic um, material and, and the Ring of Fire. And in the early days, this area here above Santa Rosa was considered a resort for steam. Uh, there were um, certainly indigenous people and resorts built in the early years that were enjoying the steam aspect. But now they are drilling boreholes, some as deep as 13,000 feet. The majority are about 8,000 feet. They drill down till they get past the alluvial soil, which is all of the crumbling material, till they get in hard rock. And then they can literally, if you can uh, visualize a tripod, they can drill in different directions. Uh, to harvest more steam. Now, to harvest more steam in this geothermal plant, Richie, they have built a 40-mile pipe with booster pumps from our wastewater treatment plant, and they're pumping up toxic urine, poop, and pharmaceutical water and injecting it, fracking it, into these boreholes in the mountains above Santa Rosa in Northern California to create more steam. And I will tell you, those plants create acid rain. Those plants create um, hydrogen um, sulfide. You, it will cause death within a minute if you breathe hydrogen sulfide. We recently found out that in Madera, in California, there was a failure of a wastewater treatment plant, and they investigated and, and found out that there was a hydrogen sulfide uh, in the fecal and urine material in the wastewater treatment plant. And they didn't know where that came from. Well, when you read the documents, as I have, you find out that our bodies absorb certain amounts of it, and it's excreted through our urine. And so wastewater treatment plants, in the event of a blackout, will fail. They will fail. Uh, our, our facilities, of which we have dozens and dozens of nuclear facilities around the United States, will fail. And they know it, and they tell us that in this electromagnetic defense task force document that I'm referring to. This has been set up. This has been the plan. This is what they're going to now uh, blame, lack of vegetation because of power outages. And when I look at the major vegetation companies that serve the utility companies in the United States, they're all tied in to the global controllers, Richie. This is all a psyops. Lord only knows how much money is being spent for vegetation removal that is going into the pockets of people and not vegetation removal at all. Tell you what we're going to do today. We're going to leave it for, for now because I've got six minutes to get off the air. And um, I, I did say this back in October when we, we first spoke. Um, I'm happy to, well, of course, I'm, I'm more than happy to, to do this, um, I don't know, every eight or ten weeks that you want to come on, we can do a show um, because there's always something going on. And, we, you know, if that's something we can set up, we can arrange. I'd be delighted to do that. There's been a huge reaction to this program today. We've had hundreds and hundreds of tweets. And if people don't believe me, they can go to Twitter and put Richie Allen Show into Twitter. You'll see the tweets that have come in um, with questions and points and points of view. Um, stop the crime dot net for more. Uh, that's where you'll find Deborah. That's the website. Links there to the YouTube videos that she's already mentioned. Thanks for coming back, Deborah. Massively important stuff. This, and like I said, I am delighted to have you back anytime you want in the near future. Well, we have to link arms across the oceans and compare notes and see what's occurring because we're all one human family, and we're under mass attack. And too few people recognize what is occurring. And we can literally help to save some emotional lives as more and more unbelievable events uh, present themselves. And uh, that is an important issue. 
to psychologically preserve people and allow them to love their families and friends and neighbors now, one day at a time, while we all still are able to do that. And I guess I would leave it there because the balance of knowing all of this requires some balance in recognizing that we are still alive right now. I'm still talking on air. Everyone is still listening that's able to listen. You're talking, we're sharing, and we're still alive. And in the middle of all of this horrific information, we have to love. We have to reach out. We have to pray. We need to love our family more because we do know what's going on. We do know what is happening. And we can feel it in the environment here. We can feel the increased electrification in the air. We can literally, I will wrap up the show by saying I appreciate everyone listening. Richie, I I more than appreciate being on the, the radio with you today. And absolutely, I'll come back because I'm I'm just driven uh, to find out uh, and not be deceived anymore. And I want to share what I find and what I document. And I'm known for documents. I rely heavily on documents and only on documents, actually, that are massive documents, not just a, a single document here or there. So again, I really appreciate your having me on. Everybody stay safe. Go to StopTheCrime.net. Sign up. You'll get our email blast. Look at our YouTube videos. And uh, go to PrimaryWater.org, too, and understand the really great news of Primary Water. And don't be deceived. Please don't be deceived. You look after yourself. Thanks for your time again today, Deborah. You take care and um, we'll do it all again soon. For anybody joining this late, it will be on Podomatic and iTunes and Spotify real soon. It'll be on YouTube later on. Deborah will then grab it, presumably, and put it on her own YouTube channel and it'll be there uh, archived for anybody who came in on the end of it. That's it for today. Deborah, thank you. Look after yourself. Godspeed. Speak soon. Absolutely. Thank you, Richie. Not at all. Bye for now. The brilliant Deborah Tavares live on The Richie Allen Show for Thursday, uh, January 10th, 2019. You will have noticed that Jim Fetzer was going to be on the programme today to talk about uh, his pending lawsuit. He's being sued, by the way, uh, by Lenny Posner, the father of Noah Posner, who uh, was killed at Sandy Hook back in t- elementary school, of course, back in 2012. Going to speak to Jim about that. Uh, Jim very kindly deferred and said, no problems, Richie. Um, uh, he's well aware that the uh, subject matters we were talking about with Deborah couldn't just cut her short there after an hour. It was well worth keeping her on for the extended conversation, the extended chat. So Jim will join the programme on Tuesday, not Monday, because Monday's already full up. Got a terrific programme lined up for you on Monday. Tell you more about that in the next couple of days as well. That's it for the programme. Then it's been a very interesting week. First proper week back. Thanks to uh, Deborah again. Thanks to all my guests this week. You and I will speak again on Sunday, uh, during Sunday View, which of course begins at 11 o'clock Sunday morning. That's on uh, Fab Radio 2, TriggerWarning.tv, uh, RichieAllen.co.uk and everywhere else. That's Sunday View this coming Sunday at um, 11 a.m. UK time. All right. All right. What have I got lined up here? I have no idea. What have I got lined up? I might have some cure lined up. Yeah, all right. Here's the cure then. And this might just close the program out. Don't even know if it will. Stop the crime.net to find out more about Deborah Tavares. Have yourselves a wonderful weekend. Speak to you on Sunday. Bye for now. Yeah.